Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It is totally free and a great way to help me out on YouTube. I'm so close to hitting 100,000 and when we hit that we are going to do a big giveaway so I'm super excited for you guys to be a part of that. Today's video we are going to do a painted acrylic sign. These are super popular for weddings but I also love them to use for birthdays. They're really really great signs in photos as well so you could use these for like save the dates things like that and they're really really beautiful. We are going to use the hinge method to actually apply our vinyl so if you haven't seen that video it's a great way to apply a larger decal and make sure that everything is straight and even. And I'm going to show you guys how to create your sign to actually make your vinyl decal and then I'll show you guys how to paint on the acrylic. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is put in a template. So I always start with a template. It just makes it easier to make sure you have everything sized the way that you want to. So we're going to use a square and our sign is 11 by 14. So what I need to do is unlock my square with this little lock right down here in the lower left hand corner. And I'm gonna make it 14 inches wide and 11 inches high because we're gonna do this landscape versus portrait size. So I think that looks good. I like to change the color of my square. I just make it a lighter color. It makes it easier for me to see it. And you can do that if you want, you don't have to. The next thing that we're going to do now is add in our text. So we're going to go ahead and use this really, really beautiful script font and it's called Melanie and I have already installed this. I'll link this font below if you guys want it. The paid font does have the glyphs that we're going to use. The free font that you can find on Defont does not. So make sure that you are checking out that paid font. I got mine from Creative Fabrica. And I have a coupon code for you guys if you would like to get their subscription. It'll save you 30% and the code is Corinne30, C-O-R-I-N-N-E-3-0. So we're going to go ahead and select the Melanie font and just type the word welcome. Now right now it looks a little funky and that's okay. This is one of those fonts that we do need to ungroup and kind of mess with but you can use the letter spacing to get everything closer to where you want it. So just click on the letter spacing, which I accidentally clicked line spacing, it doesn't matter, but click letter spacing and go ahead and space that down a bit. And I usually will space it until about that E is where I want it and everything else will have to um, ungroup and do. But I'm gonna make this way bigger because it's easier to see your spacing for your letters when you make something really, really big because you can see that the C isn't quite where we want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup these and I just wanna move the C over a little bit and then I wanna move the E and the L. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the E, hold control on my keyboard and select the L because those guys are spaced really, really well and go ahead and move those over until I'm happy with them. W we're gonna mess with in a minute because we're actually gonna change this W out and this final E on the end out. We are gonna use a program called um, High Logic Main Type. This is an awesome program and it helps you kind of deal with your fonts and see all of your extra characters. I have a whole video about how to use extra characters that goes into far more detail, but all we're gonna do is find Melanie on our list over here. Go to the basic Latin selection up at the top and then you can find all of the different um, characters and glyphs that you are offered. Now we don't have a capital W with a swirl on it, so we'll just use a lowercase, that's totally fine. Right click on it and click copy to clipboard. Go back over to your design space and double click your W and then you use control V in order to paste your letter on to your design and I accidentally grabbed the L. Um, that way it will put your W where you want it. It's probably gonna slide it a bit because I made the whole word too big. But for now, just leave this over to the side. We'll get to him in just a second. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is change out this E really fast. And the E, we're going to slide down a little bit. And they do have an E that somewhat matches the W. So again, right click, copy to keyboard, go back to your Cricut design space, select that E that you want to change out, and then control V. Now again, you're going to have to space the E back where you want it. And that's totally okay. But now what I want to do is make sure I just select all of my letters really quick because I need to size them down a little bit. 
So I'm just gonna size them down so that they'll fit on the screen just for a minute. And you wanna make sure that you size everything the same time or you're gonna have kind of a funky sized letter. So we'll go ahead and move this W and you can kind of put it wherever you think it belongs. I like to try to make it so that it looks like it flows into that E. Now what you're gonna do is select all of your letters again and click weld. Simple as that's really, really easy. Now I'm gonna cut this on a 11 or a 12 by 12 sheet because I don't have the color I want in anything larger, but I think it's totally fine. It's gonna look really good on this 14 inch um, acrylic piece that we're using. So I, again, just use this kind of for spacing and to figure out where I want stuff and what I want it to look like. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the names of our bride and groom, and you can do this however you want. I like to use a more soft, stocky type font, like something a little bit thinner, um, but still very um, plain. I don't like to do anything crazy. There's a couple fonts that are some of my favorites when it comes to doing some of these more plain looking fonts. DK Lemon Yellow, um, I believe it's just DK Lemon Yellow Sun maybe. Yeah, DK Lemon Yellow Sun is a really, really fun one. I don't think it quite goes with this script font though, and I don't like the and symbol. So a couple others that you can use, you can kind of play around, see what you like, but you just kind of find a script font or a plain font. It's it's all personal preference. There's no right or wrong way to design um, something that you're making. As long as you or the client likes it, that's really all that matters. Um, you guys can be really, really super creative with this stuff. And it's, it's so fun to play around with fonts, figure out what looks best together. So for this one, like I said, I'm just gonna kind of scroll for a minute and see what I find. Um, as soon as I find something, I will let you know. We're gonna go ahead and go with uh, Kandara Light, which is just a plain font that comes with your um, computer. But it's really simple to read. It's I think it looks really nice. And then you can add whatever you want. So you can add dates and times and whatever you want, but we're just gonna add um, a date. And I'm just gonna make this as our wedding. So you're gonna see kind of an, like an old date on it and it's fine, whoops, and not 2027. <laughs> So you can, again, add whatever you want to these signs. There's lots of inspiration and things that you can do to this. You can obviously change the size of anything that you would like. And again, I just use this purple square as kind of a spacer to figure out where I want everything to be. And you can kind of move it around and just mess around with it. You can add more text if you'd like. So we're gonna do welcome to the marriage of I don't know you can again this is just sort of whatever you'd like to put on here if you would like to do different types of script fonts if you would like to do different styles of fonts like if I make this bold it looks a little bit different than those you can size it down size it up whatever you want to do this is all you and whatever you and the client wants now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my text and I'm going to align it and I'm gonna go ahead and do a center horizontally before I do um, the cut because I wanna make sure everything's centered on our page. So again, I am doing it a width of 11.5, which is as wide as you can cut on a Cricut, but you can always do this on a larger 24 inch mat if you have um, the color you need, I don't. So we're gonna go ahead and just do it this way. And I wanna leave space around it so that you can see the paint that we're gonna to do to the acrylic. So once that is done and you are set, you can go ahead and just click attach. You wanna make sure all of your words are attached, that way they don't move around when you go to click make it. You also wanna get rid of the square because you no longer need the square and go ahead and click make it. That way you can see what it looks like on your screen and I'll change the color really quick. It's always so hard to see when it's on black, but I want you guys to see what it's gonna look like. So I'm just gonna change the color to something bright. It doesn't matter what color it is on your screen. It only matters what color you put into the Cricut. So it can be blue on your screen and you can put silver or black or whatever color you want in there. Whatever color vinyl you place into the machine, it will cut on. So we're gonna click make it again, that way you can see it better. But you see it's all spaced out the way we want it to be, that way we don't have to kind of mess with it and space it out ourselves. 
and we can just simply cut it, weed it, and apply it. So we are going to cut this on StarCraft HD. We're going to use one of their gold colors and um, we're going to do a navy blue back. It's going to be really pretty. So I'm going to show you guys how to apply the vinyl first. I prefer to apply vinyl and then paint. So I'll show you guys how to do that. We're just using some acrylic that we got from Home Depot, and this looks frosted right now because it has protective coating on both sides. So you're gonna wanna take the protective coating off one of the sides, and I just use my pin pen and peel up a corner. I'm not real great at this because it is a really, really thin coating, but you just wanna peel up a corner, and you can peel either side, it doesn't matter. You're gonna end up peeling both sides by the time you're done. Here is the vinyl that we're gonna use. It's a little curled on this side, but that's okay. We're gonna use some medium tack transfer tape from 143 Vinyl, and this is my favorite transfer tape. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull back some tape, and I'm just gonna lay my decal right down on it. Just lay that face down, and I just lay it all the way across. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and just trim across the transfer tape. Now I'm gonna move this off to the side really quick because we wanna make sure that we burnish this down first. So burnishing is basically just taking your squeegee and running it over your decal. Once you've burnished your decal, I'm using a self-healing mat from Cricut. This is a super helpful tool to line up your designs straight on, and especially on a clear piece, but it just gives you a little bit of a line to work with, and I just find it a little bit easier to do that. Now we're gonna use the hinge method to do this, and if you guys haven't seen the hinge method, it's really easy, and I'll show you how to do it. So we're gonna take a little bit of painter's tape, and you can use washi tape, Anything that isn't really sticky will work. You don't want it to stick too hard to your item, but you do want to be able to hold it down. So I'm just gonna take some painter's tape and just run it across my decal. Go ahead and pop that off of your acrylic. And what you're gonna do, and I always just take my painter's tape and kind of fold it on top of my decal for just a second because I just wanna figure out where I want this to lay. Your transfer tape will stick to the um, acrylic. So I just kind of try to figure out where I want this to sit and about where center is. I think that looks pretty good. So once you have that done, you're gonna take your painter's tape and just lay it down across the design. Now they call this the hinge method because you basically created a hinge in your design with your painter's tape. So you have this side, and then you have this side. So what we'll do is we're gonna take and fold this side over and remove the backing from our decal. You wanna do this really slowly because these are pretty small letters and they're thin. So you wanna go real slow and just very gently peel your backing off until you are to your painter's tape. Then you're gonna carefully take a pair of scissors and especially on acrylic, you wanna be very, very careful because you can scratch the acrylic. So just be very gentle with your scissors. Don't run them super like hard across the acrylic piece. And I'm just gonna cut my backing off. Now what I'm gonna do is take my squeegee and just gently lay my decal down, so your vinyl, and just go slow across the whole thing. You're just taking your squeegee and holding your decal up with one hand and running your squeegee along your decal with the other. And don't worry, this white right here is just the logo and like paper that they stick on the acrylic. It's not actually part of the acrylic itself. So once you have that part, you do wanna make sure you burnish that down well. Go ahead and peel back your painter's tape. And bonus, if you have somewhere to stick this, you can use this piece of painter's tape again which is super nice. You can use the painter's tape a couple times if you're doing the hinge method. So if you have a bunch of signs to do, it's a great idea to kind of hold on to that piece of painter's tape because you can reuse it a few times. So then what I'm gonna do is take this half of my backing and do the same thing. So I'm folding it over and you're just gonna gently remove 
the backing, and again, very carefully because you do have very thin letters, just making sure that everything stays on the transfer tape. And then just like you did with the other side, you're gonna go ahead and come across it just gently, and it does slide a little bit, so just make sure you kind of hold it down and just gently go across. Now, with something like this, you're probably not gonna get a lot of bubbles because the letters are so thin. But just to be safe, you do wanna take it slow and just go a little bit at a time, pressing it down as you go. So I'm gonna give this one final burnish over the whole thing. I just wanna make sure that everything is stuck down. And I know the lines sort of make it look like it's super uneven, but it's really not. It's just because the lines are not even with the uh, acrylic right now. And I know it's a little bit hard to see because it's clear acrylic, so it's hard to see it. So now what we're gonna do is take our transfer tape. And I will say vinyl does like to stick to plastic, so this should stick really, really well. But all we're gonna do is just very gently, again, anytime you're working with small letters, always go gently. And I'm just gonna peel off my transfer tape. And this process is a little tedious, but it's definitely worth it in the end to go slow. So you just wanna take it and just go very slow. And you'll notice that I'm not peeling my transfer tape like straight up like this. I have it folded over on itself, so it's flat. And I'm just peeling it at a really sharp angle. Now it does like to curl, so that's something to keep in mind when you're doing this. You're gonna get this weird curl, but it's the best way to get your transfer tape off and not pull up your vinyl. Now again, the transfer tape likes to stick to the acrylic as well, so this is definitely a project that has a nice stick to it. But you just go slow, and you'll see how nicely this is staying down. This StarCraft HD is so nice, and this color gold is so pretty. I'm not usually a big gold fan, but this is definitely one of my favorite golds. So then as you're going, and don't worry, because you can clean this off, so if you get your handprints on it, don't worry, we will wipe it off when we're done. But we're just gonna take and go across this, nice and gentle. And once you get to the end, it's gonna be a little tough because you're gonna have like a bunch of transfer tape that's just sort of a big block. But once you get to the end, you can just pull all of that off. And then, I don't know if you guys can see that real well, but there is your vinyl all stuck on. So once you've done that side, you can totally flip it right over. And we're gonna take the protective coating off of this side so that we can paint it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and peel this off. And for the painting portion, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys see this on the white table and you'll be able to see the words a lot better. Now we're just going to use an acrylic paint. This is a folk art multi-surface paint and the color is called Ink Spot, if anybody wanted to use this exact color. I got this from Michaels. And I'm gonna show you guys the brush we're gonna use. So for the painting part, we're gonna use this bristly brush. I just got this off of at Michaels in a pack. It's by Art Minds, but any kind of bristly brush works really well for this. And then we're gonna use this navy bluish Ink Spot paint. This is a really pretty color, so I'll show it to you guys. It's really blue. And then I just have a little paint tray here. These are great because you can wash them when you're done. And I'm just gonna squirt some paint out. I don't wanna put a ton out because this doesn't really take a lot of paint. But what you're gonna do is just go ahead, dip your brush in, and you do wanna get a decent amount on there because don't worry, you can spread it around. And then just kind of go for it. You just do this. I mean, I don't know how else to describe this. You just run your paintbrush over it. And I know right now you'll be able to see through it and that's okay because we are going to put a couple coats on here to make it a little bit um, darker. But you don't want like even ends. So you don't want like a perfect square. So you just sort of cover up where the words are. And that's why I like to put the words on first because you can make sure that you've painted where all of your letters are. And you just wanna make sure that you cover all the letters and then you can kind of brush out the sides however you want them to look and the top if you want kind of a bigger top there or you want it to go down a little bit more. But you want kind of uneven edges and you just kind of try to go all in the same direction. Now one thing to keep in mind, you'll see that this already has started to dry. So we've got kind of a glob. So keep that in mind that as you do this, it will dry pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover that up really quick. 
and actually some of this is bristles from the brush so this is not the best brush I will say that I'm not the biggest fan of these brushes but it's what I had on hand so if you get any kind of bristles in there you should be able to just pick them out right with your brush again and then you can just go right back over where you brushed out the bristles and cover that back up but the bristles can be a definite pain in the tuchus so go ahead and just brush over where those bristles were. If you find any more bristles, just pull them out because they are definitely falling out like a lot. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and just let this dry. Just this first coat is gonna go ahead and dry. And if you get anything like where you don't want it, like see, I'm gonna make a big mess right here. You can just come in with like a baby wipe or um, a wet finger or anything like that and just wipe it right off. It comes right off and it's totally fine no big deal you can just make it go away and if you find that you don't like the way it went go ahead and wash it if you don't love it wash it but I'll show you what the one side looks like right now before we let it dry so that's just with one coat it's really pretty but it's gonna be very see-through so I'm gonna let this dry and we'll put another coat on it I've let our first coat dry overnight that way it didn't smear anything we go to put our second coat on so we're just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing and again that's so why I like this brush because you can see it kind of leaves the brush strokes. I really like the look of that. You obviously can do this any way you want to, but for me, I really like the brush strokes on it. Now, I didn't wash this brush, so this brush is like hard as a rock, which is actually pretty good because it's not going to take the paint away. And I want a nice thick coat on this coat because this is the one that we're going to use to kind of make it so you can't see through the sign. So just kind of put a nice thick coat of paint on. And you can always add more coats. The lighter color paint you use, the more coats it will take to kind of cover your sign and make it so that your design on your sign isn't so see-through. But with this dark blue, it should only take two coats. But again, you can always add more. Now, I don't want to get too close to the edges with a thick coat because I do like the way that the edges look with that really light coat so I'm just gonna kind of make sure to brush where all of my words are and just make sure that we get a nice thick coat of paint just right where all of the words are and in the center that way it's gonna be a nice heavy coat and you won't see through and then where we kind of had to mess around and get that little piece of the brush out we're gonna make sure we cover that spot up as well and again, there is no wrong way to do signs like this. You can do these in any way that you'd like, with any colors that you like, any type of design that you like. And I'm just going to feather out these edges just a little bit, just on this thicker paint. So we're just going to kind of go through and just feather them out a little bit. And you can always check what your sign looks like while you're working on it. Obviously, don't set it down, but you can just flip it over and you can see what your sign looks like. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more paint over here because it looks a little uneven on that side. So again, we'll just take a little dab of paint and we'll just sort of feather out that side. And again, these are not supposed to be perfect squares. They can be whatever you would like them to be. And you just kind of add a little paint. And again, if you hate it, take it to the sink and wash it off. You can absolutely do that. I think that looks so much better. So what I'm gonna do is let this dry for a little while and I'm gonna show you guys our finished product. Here is our finished sign. I hope you guys had so much fun learning how to make this. This was a really fun craft for me. And again, I feel like these are perfect for all sorts of events, not just weddings. These are really, really fun and can be used in so many ways. And there's a lot of different things you can do with acrylic and acrylic paint. So let your imagination run wild. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you do subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays with the occasional bonus live video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and happy crafting.